all right we're gonna start this video off once again let me reiterate I'm not trying to hate on Billy Garland I don't have you know I don't personally hate the man we all have our faults but I just like to see people's true intentions and this man Billy Garland didn't really care about finding Tupac until he saw that Tupac became famous. This is clear and this is evident and to me that shows me that he has a lack of integrity and consciousness. Period. You know I compare this to a parent being very good and kind to you when you're rich but if you was broke they wouldn't give a damn about you they wouldn't even talk to you I compare this to that you know also once Tupac got over his curiosity of who his dad was after he got to know him a little bit while he was incarcerated um, Tupac was over it he, you know he got to he got to know and learn who his dad was and and really after that didn't want anything to do with him as you can see, as you can hear in his interview. Okay. okay. What about father figures? Like, you don't hear much about it. You speak about your mother a lot, not about your father. Um, you have a relationship with him? I thought my father was dead for all my life. Really? Except after I got shot, I looked up and there was this nigga that looked dead on me. And he was my father, so I found out. We still ain't taking no blood test, but I mean, a nigga look like me, mm -hmm. and then the other nigga is dead. So to me, it's like I'm past the father thing. You yeah, know what I mean? But yeah. I, I do want to know him, and I do know him. We right. do talk, and he did help me while I was locked down. And yeah. He did come visit me, and it's all love. But I'm past that. Okay, so you heard it right there from his own mouth. He passed it. He said it twice. He doubled down on it, which means. He see through Billy Garland. He really don't want nothing to do with Billy Garland. No more. You know, he found out, okay, you my dad, okay, you did, you know, you, you did this and that. You didn't come to see me. Yeah, I never knew who you were. I never seen your face. And, man, get the fuck out of here. You know, after he got over his curiosity, like, man, I don't want to fuck with it. I don't want to deal with this guy. Pretty much. He like, man, I don't want to deal with this motherfucker. Fuck this dude. I'm past that. I'm past that meaning I don't want to deal with you no more. I'm done. You know what I mean? Like, don't come around trying to be a daddy now, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because Tupac was not very intelligent. He couldn't tell Tupac, you know, I, tr I was looking for you, man. I couldn't find you. He couldn't tell that lie to Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Like he can tell us. He can tell us these lies. That that he couldn't find them. It was hard. Bullshit. If he wanted to find Park, he could have found them. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to find them. And Park knew that. And Park saw through that bullshit. You know? And also, I think Tupac saw him as a coward. Didn't have respect for him. No love for my daddy because the coward wasn't there. You know, Tupac's lyrics are very prophetic. He said things that don't even happen yet. Maybe his intentions was, was for another man, but it fits this man as well. Because he wasn't there. And this is another video that makes me think Tupac was talking about Billy Garland. Right here. She wasn't caring about herself at that moment. Tell Being me. a man, I needed a father, uh, I needed a male influence in my life. And these were the males. The other males who could have been a more positive influence on me were too scared to come where I was. Or they didn't have the money or they didn't right. have the heart or whatever. Well, tell okay, so the reason I say that he's talking about Billy Garland right here. Or the, the shoot, if he not, the shoot perfectly fits Billy Garland. He's talking about whoever the shoot fits, basically. You know, Billy Garland pretty much pretty much validated everything Park said. Now listen to what Billy Garland had to say of why he lost contact with Tupac when he was near him. 
up until the age of 13 years old. So Tupac really didn't go missing. Billy Garland is the one that went missing. That. Um, uh, what age was Tupac when you lost contact with him? Uh, he had to be, I used to go over to uh, the Bronx, Morningside. I used to visit him. Not as much, though. When the party broke up, it was, a, it was just, it was something different. Uh, Cointel had changed us. Cointel had had us looking at each other suspiciously. There had been a couple murders, Panther on Panther murder. That's when everybody went to the four winds. They just scattered. Everybody went their different ways. And I was one of those who went a different way. I lost con this nigga scared. contact with a Faney, which later I found out she had moved to Baltimore. Yeah, she moved to Baltimore, but she was still in that area for around 10 years before she moved to Baltimore. So you had plenty of time to find Pac if you wanted to. Then Oakland, you see, so it was, uh, I'd say maybe 13, 14 years, a gap of not seeing my son. People say, well, why didn't you look for him? I didn't know where. And then it was something that I wish I had. You see that pause right there? That pause, he he can he don't have an excuse. That that's why that pause is there. He he know he know he didn't really give a fuck, but he wish he had. You know what I'm saying? That's what that long pause was about. He, there's no excuse, man. You just did not give a fuck. Just be honest and just say, I didn't really care. But I wish I had. You know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I wish I had. Looking back at it now, seeing who Tupac became, yeah. I wish I had, you know, playing money, playing Monday night quarterbacking. But while you was in the moment, that's what really counts. That's your true heart right there. More so. But nobody lived in stationary locations. So? We all moved. We had apartments. Even when we were in the Panthers, we had apartments throughout all the Bronx, all of Manhattan. We were like, you know, gypsies. Not so much uh, in that sense, but in the way that the way we lived, we moved around a lot. So I so, went to a couple places, but nobody had seen her. They told me someone had moved to Baltimore, so I accepted that. And there was nothing I could do about it at that time, you know. See, this is why I said this guy's a scumbag, because what he's doing is psychology one-on-one. He's trying to manipulate the audience, what he has done with groupie comments. He's trying to manipulate the audience to feel sympathy for him. You know, he's trying to garner some sympathies from the audience. Oh, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, they moved. You know, all these excuses he's making. Uh, we was moving. Cointel Pro is the reason I couldn't see my son. Uh, Feeney is... The, it's her fault I couldn't see my son. She was moving all the time. You know, and he he puts very little blame on himself. You know what I'm saying? It's mostly everybody else's fault the reason he couldn't see his son. You know, he puts more blame on them. Uh, you know, uh, I, you know. then she moved to Baltimore. But he's not telling us that Pop was around 10 years prior to moving to Baltimore. He was still in that area for 10 years. Tupac was a damn Tupac was a fucking teenager when he moved to Baltimore. You know what I mean? So nothing can keep you from your kids, man. If you really want to get to your kids, you you will die for your kids. So this whole Cointel Pro Cointel been around before uh, Tupac was born. Cointel was out there. So what are you talking about? Talking about Cointel like like that's an excuse to stay away. Uh, all. You had to do was keep in contact with a Feeney. If to, if Feeney didn't want to know what didn't want you to know where she stayed at, y'all could event, uh, mutually agree to meet somewhere with Tupac and take Tupac. You know what I'm saying? All that, it, all these excuses is bullshit. That's why I say he's a scumbag because he's still trying to manipulate the audience. He's still in a way lying, not being truth truthful being deceitful 
You know, he's being deceitful, man. He was trying to garner up sympathy, garner up all these excuses. Simple of the, the simple of the matter. Fact of the matter is, you didn't really want to be in two pot light till you found out he was a see he was a success. Come on, man. Pl there are plenty of fathers out here do the same shit. Just be straight up honest, and then you felt you had the right to the money to the estate. When you going, but when you didn't contribute no support to Tupac growing up in his childhood years, Tupac just said he needed a father. Tupac was going to school. People was picking on Tupac for not having clothes. Tupac used to wear the same clothes every day to school. You know what I'm saying? Uh, his 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 what is what what is his best friend name? Miles had to let Tupac borrow some clothes. You know, Tupac needed your support. But you want to get support from Tupac. You want to take Tupac money. You know, now that he's dead. But growing up, Tupac needed you, needed you, needed your support. And you didn't provide any. But you have the nerve to show up in the courtroom and try to sue for his estate. Get the fuck out of here. Man, that's why I say this man's a scumbag, man. You know? I hate to say it, but I just think he's a scumbag. Whether he consciously know it or not, he could be a subconscious scumbag. And you know, when Tupac talked about, you know, he needed some role models, some father figures, but they were either scared to come around or they didn't have enough heart. It just makes me think he was taking a dig at his father right there. It, it makes me think because you know Tupac asked him why you didn't come around. And you know they had conversations of why he didn't come around. And I'm pretty sure the conversation was something he said in the interview talking about COINTEL and Panther. You, they couldn't trust. You didn't know who to trust. Panther and Panther was killing each other. And I believe he told Tupac some, something similar to that. And Tupac came up to the conclusion, oh, okay, this nigga, you scared. This nigga scared. You ain't having no heart. No love for my daddy because the coward wasn't there. Hey, and like OJ Simpson say, I'm just saying.